Bloomberg's John Gittleson is joining us now to discuss his legacy. John, you and I have covered him so closely. What are the words to take away? Um, definitely a giant has been lost uh, in the industry, personality, and um, yeah, the guy had a huge heart, and it's kind of ironic he died of a heart attack. Well, John, talk to us a little bit about his perspective here when he approached a lot of these kind of major issues. He's made a very famous calls, not just in the bond market, but in the crypto space as well. My understanding, uh, having interviewed him just a couple of times, is this idea that he approached it more from an accounting perspective. He really looked at the fundamentals, didn't really take sentiment into account. Would you agree with that? Um, well, I think on a lot of his calls, he was very much by his gut. There were, he was one of those guys who is like often wrong, but never in doubt. Um, when it came to investing and putting money to work, he was very systematic about it. Um, so there, there were kind of like two sides to him. One side was the TV commentator who was very entertaining and, you know, unafraid to sort of make a bold comment or prediction. Uh, and then there was the actual running money. As a bond guy, you have to be extremely cautious. Your your number one job as a bond guy is don't lose money. And uh, so with that as your starting point, you, you try and buy bonds that will pay off at the end. Uh, and he actually had a pretty rough year, like most bond managers this year. But his long-term track record was really, you know, stellar top 90 percentile of his uh, peers for the last, you know, decade. What was he like, John? I mean, you and I are writing about it right now, this idea that, you know, we cover a ton of people on Wall Street, but he really wasn't the average Wall Street guy. I mean, I remember you and I were talking to him once. We were uh, interviewing him at Milken, and he got a call randomly from Sil Sylvester Stallone <laughs> asking him for insurance advice. And talk to us a little about just what he was like as, as the person. Yeah, well, I mean, he moved out to California after starting on Wall Street and being like an international traveler for Credit Suisse and Morgan Stanley. He burned out at about age 37, moved out to California and said, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. And he hung out on Venice Beach. And, you know, through the end, he was working out when uh, he had his heart attack. But he, in Venice Beach, would like have lunch at this place called the Firehouse with the former Mr. Olympia, Mr. World, Mr. Universe, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. They like bump into each other and hang out together. And Sly Stallone wasn't just an actor, celebrity. He was also like a bodybuilder type together. So yeah, he worked in that world. He was very religious. Um, he could cite scripture, you know, memorize it. And uh, he had a little dog. Gracie, who he loved. He married his partner, um, a younger guy, and, you know, kind of unusual to be uh, a gay guy who he didn't, like, wear it on his sleeve. He also had a lot of charitable work that he did. He donated millions of dollars to the uh, Union Rescue Mission in L.A. The guy who ran it, Andy Bales, told me this morning, like, he was our guardian angel. And so, yeah, really diverse personality.